Buongiorno. My name is Galileo Galilei, but you can call me Galileo. I am 443 years old. <laughs> I come from Italy. I did lots of clever things, but my passion, oh, she is the stars and the planets in the sky. So you could call me an astronomer. When you look into the sky, you can see anything. But what I saw got me into big trouble. Oh, Dad is playing the lute again. He is brilliant at music. Always writing songs and whistling tunes. It drives my mad. Oh, no, not again. Mind you, she's uh, generally a little bit grumpy at the moment. Hey, look at me, little Galileo. Oh, I'm so sweet. <laughs> I am the first baby in this house. There will be six more after me. None of them interesting. <laughs> what a squash. Ciao, mama. Perhaps that's why I was bundled off at 15 years old to live in the nearby monastery. Actually, Dad knew I was a clever and wanted me to learn, and the monks who lived there taught me Latin and maths and all about God. At the first, I didn't want to go, but then I got really into it. I decided to become a monk. Oh, no, you're not a sunny boy, said my dad. You are going to be a nice doctor. That's a good job. He had to drag me away screaming. So I went to learn how to be a doctor at the University of Pisa, our town. Actually, I was more interested in maths. Oh, those other boys they were the goody-goodies. <laughs> Everyone wore sensible clothes and had their nose in a book. Not me. I was always arguing with the professors, doing a weird experiments and driving everyone a mad crazy. <laughs> I suddenly livened the place up. One Sunday, I went to church. I was aboard. Soon, I noticed the lamp hanging above my head. It was swinging back and forth, back and forth in the wind. I noticed how evenly it swung. I timed the swings with my pulse on my wrist, and each swing was the same. One, two, three. I thought uh, that could be a useful way to measure time. Mamma mia! Così van tutti. Which do you think will fall faster? The big heavy ball or the small light ball? In my day, Everyone believed that heavy things fell faster, and I wanted to prove them wrong. I carried various rocks, cannonballs, feathers, eggs, apples to the top of the Tower of Pisa. And then I dropped them off the top. <laughs> My experiment proved I'm a very clever guy. <laughs> the big heavy cannonball and the titchy little one both hit the ground at the same time. Heavy thing, lighter thing. You drop, they fall at the same speed. A while later, I left the university and I grew up a little bit. But I still knew how to have a good time. I met Marina. Oh, che bella figura questa stagione! Which is Italian for we fell very much in love. About that time, I invented a compass which helped ships know where they were going. All the lords and the ladies loved it, and it made me very rich. Thanks to my compass, I had become a rather a successful inventor. <laughs> I bought myself a big house in the middle of town where I lived on my own. Marina had to live down the road in a smaller house. We uh, weren't married, so we weren't supposed to live together. When my father died, I became head of the family. I had to look after not just my children, but my brothers and sisters too. My sister asked me for money so that she could get married. And here is my good-for-nothing brother. He's a musician, and he's always borrowing the money of me. And my dear old mama. Mama! Oh, she's getting on a little bit, and she needs money for food and uh, servants. Some time later, I bump into some friends while I was on a holiday in Venice. 
uh, they told me this amazing news. There's a man in Holland, a country very far away from a man, and he has invented this unbelievable thing. He called it a telescope. They say that with this long, thin tube, things that were far away seem very, very close. He said, incredible thing, I want one. <laughs> I rushed home and I started hammering away for all I was worth. I got bits of glass and long bits of wood and I tried dozens of different ways to make this uh, telescope thing. <laughs> At last it worked. When you looked through it, things came very close indeed. It was useful at sea for spying enemy ships which were a long way off. But for me, it was the most wonderful invention in the world. I was the first person ever to look at the stars through a telescope. My telescope showed me things that would astonish everyone. Because you look into eternity. In time, I discovered that the Earth doesn't stay still all the time. It's moving around the sun. Shh! Now, don't say that too loud around here. In my day, everyone believed the Earth was the center of all the planets in the sky, and to say it wasn't got you into big trouble. The priests in the church refused to believe me. The Earth is still. All planets spin around us, they told me. A priest came to remind me that the last man who had said the same thing had been burned alive in the town square. Ah! So I had better watch out. But this new discovery was just so big and exciting. What could I do? I had to write it down for everyone to read. Those priests got upset when the book came out. <laughs> oh, they were so furious with me because lots of people began to think about the sun and the stars in a new way. For them it was a, a mind-blowing idea. Oh, but the Pope, oh, the big head of the whole church, he really blew his top. He mustn't say that. The Earth is the center of the universe. Everyone knows that. Not the sun. Arrest him at once and bring him to me. I was brought to face the scary men of the Inquisition, a bit like going to see the headmaster, but a lot worse. They told me I wasn't allowed to tell such lies about the earth moving. Well, they thought they were lies, and they had nasty things to hurt me with if I didn't take back what I said. Well, what would you do? Of course I took it back. I didn't want to get burned. Yes, sir. My mistake. You're absolutely right. I, I don't know what it was that I was thinking. As I left the room, I say under my breath just to myself, Hey, the earth does move, really. But luckily, no one heard me. The Pope very kindly, uh, did not burn me, and nor did they put me in a smelly prison. But they did uh, lock me away in my own house for the rest of my life, nine long years. At least I was near my two darling daughters, who lived at the nunnery up the road. Right up to the end of my life, I kept busy. I was uh, working on a pendulum clock. Do you remember the swinging lamp in the church? A Galileo story ends when I was 77 years old. A fine old age for someone who lived so long ago. It's uh, over 400 years since I found out things that are still very important in our world today. Hey, I'm a great guy. I'm a Galileo. No wonder you call me the father of modern science. Galileo Galilei.